Hey guys, Sean C. Phillips here with my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Sean Barrow today. Today you're going to go out today, see what things come out today, see what things are on sale. I know one of the bigger releases today, you know, was the Tom Cruise movie American Made. Other than that, though, I know there was a couple other things coming out today as well. And Walmart, though, uh, you know, since it's the first Tuesday of the month, they always change out the actual section. So they should be getting in a bunch of new, like, indie horrors and comedies and stuff like that in the actual section. So definitely interested in seeing, you know, what they've put out today. There's one specific horror one, too, that hopefully they ended up getting. I definitely want to pick up, so we'll see, though, if they have that one. Other than that, though, at the end of this video, there's going to be some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things I received to review and talk about lately. So definitely check out those ones at the end of this video. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And if you guys haven't seen it yet, I posted up a video a couple of days ago of my picks, you know, for the best and worst movies of 2017. So definitely check out that video. I'll put a link below for that one. I also put up a new uh, weight loss journey video talking about like maintaining my weight and stuff. I posted that one up two days ago as well. So I have a link for both those ones below. Hopefully now though, you know, the last like month or two, you know, I get to this target. They don't have the stuff put out yet. So got to keep my fingers crossed and you know, all the new movies and stuff are already put out but you know we'll see I hopefully I don't have to go to another target like it seems to happen quite often now but we'll see but well they don't have the stuff out it's all the same stuff from last week they still have all these stranger things these things I feel like these are gonna be up here till like the end of time because there seems to be so many copies of these and they like I remember too when they first came out I thought they were gonna be real limited and stuff and here they are like what is this now like two months later or three months later something like that and here they are still all there but all this stuff's the same stuff from last week, so we'll have to head to another Target. But now, you know, hopefully at Walmart, though, they have all the stuff out. Because, you know, like I said, there should be a bunch of new stuff in the actual section today. And, like, there's one real specific thing I want to try and find in there. So hopefully they have all the stuff out. Into Walmart we go. Well, got to cross the fingers. Hopefully it's all out in here. And luckily enough, they have this stuff in here. You know, their copy of American Made is $22.96 for the 4K, and the standard Blu-ray is $19.96. I'm going to have a review of uh, this one at the end of this video. Other than that, though, some of the main big releases. Uh, this one came out. I forgot this one was today. This Emma Stone, Steve Carell movie, Battle of the Sexes. I actually really like this one. This is actually a pretty well-made movie. And I always like both of them, but this was actually pretty good. Um, and I think these, some of the other ones today, was this one here called Slumber, which sounded like it could be kind of interesting. But what I was reading was like some like woman that was doing like experiments on sleeping and like people were getting like haunted by a ghost kind of thing. If you guys have seen this one though, let me know though how this one is. And then this other one that released today, this Andrew Garfield movie, which I don't know anything about this one. So if you guys have seen this one, let me know how this one is. This movie here called Breathe. There's been like I think a couple other movies though with this title, I believe, but don't know anything, though, about this one. And over here, though, in the actual section, there's a bunch of things that came out today. This Harry Dean Stanton movie with him and David Lynch are in this movie called Lucky. I really like this one a lot. Harry Dean Stanton, this is, like, I believe the last movie he made before he passed away, but gives an amazing performance in this movie. It's just kind of about him going in this, he lives in this small town. He's kind of going around and just, like, the people that he's friends with and, he, and like, his encounters and stuff. But a really well-acted movie here. Other than that, though, uh, this movie here called Una released, you know, starring Rooney Mara. But I don't know much about this one if you guys have seen this one though let me know how this one was uh, love beats rhymes this release today and I talked about this one about a week or so back this one came out today this uh, valley of bones which is another one I don't know anything about I believe this was out like a week or so ago uh, this one here shockwave released today uh, another one here this Alice Eve movie stolen and I think there was a blurry of this one as well Another one, there's a lot of stuff I don't know a lot about today. A lot of westerns, like this one here, this one, Dead Man. This is like another one I don't know anything about. It. And this is like the three extended three-hour version of this one. Another western movie here, Bullets from the Dead, and Last Days of uh, Billy the Kid. So like four, four westerns that are released in the same day. Uh, these two ones, um, I'm going to have a review of these ones soon. Uh, these ones just came today. This one, Tell Me How I Die, and this one, uh, Dystopia. This is the one, though, that I wanted to get here, this one called Psychopaths. Really kind of cool cover on this one. This one looks really interesting. 
Other than that today, this one I talked about a week or so ago, No Solicitors, which was actually kind of fun movie starring Eric Roberts and uh, Beverly Randolph from, you know, Return of Living Dead is in this one playing Eric Roberts' wife. And it's this couple that like does like weird organ harvestings from people that they keep alive in their house, but really kind of weird movie, but I liked it. And then this one released, Houses October Built 2. Uh, they only seem to have the DVD of this one, but I really like this one. I like that, you know, this series of films, like they're kind of a fun if you guys like haunted houses and stuff. And other than that, I believe these two were today as well. This one, Lockout and Misfortune. But like I said, definitely was a lot of new releases that came out today. And I actually realized this one released today as well, this one, 68 Kill and The Adventurers. So both of these ones were new releases today as well. This is, you know, directed by Trent Haga, you know, who I always think of from like a lot of the trauma movies, like Terra Firma and stuff. And he's in like um, Kill Joy and a bunch of different stuff. I think this is the first movie, or no, I think it's actually the second movie that he directed though. Yeah, so I ended up picking up that Psycho Pass movie. Like I said, this looks kind of interesting. You know, it was only $9.99, so definitely was not, you know, a bad price for this one. It's always funny, though, with Walmart, with, like, these kind of movies and stuff, like the indie horrors and stuff, you can never really check too often on their website to see if they have it in stock. Because a lot of times when you look it up, they're not on there at all. So it's always hard to tell, you know, which ones they're going to carry and stuff into the second target we go. And I was just looking and one of the other things that released today was the Ben Stiller movie, Brad Status. That was actually a pretty good movie. I saw that one in theaters as well, but have yet to see that one anywhere. But I feel like they might have that one at Best Buy, you know, if anywhere does carry it in store. And in here though, they do have American Made here. So all this stuff is put out. They have, you know, the Blu-ray here is $22.99. They also carry that Andrew Garfield movie, Breathe, here for $14.99, but they don't seem to have the Blu-ray of that. And they have Battle of the Sexes here for $19.99. But yeah, I don't I think this one though has a Blu-ray release as well for that, but not 100 percent certain though. And this past weekend I saw a couple of different movies. Uh, the first one I saw was Pitch Perfect. And I always kind of like the Pitch Perfect movies. They're always pretty fun movies. This one though kind of takes some like unexpected turns with the plot. It's kind of like, wait a minute like in this direction with it and it didn't have like a huge you know story to it compared to the other ones because it was kind of just like them going on this USO tour and I don't know it, it, it's like I said it took some weird directions and stuff but I did kind of think it was a fun movie though not the best of all of them though uh, the other one I saw was you know Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle and at first I kind of thought that it was going to be you know when I first heard about it, it was going to be like a direct remake or something like that but it actually is you know a follow-up sequel and you know I actually had a lot of fun with the movie. The movie's actually got really good reviews as well, like surprisingly good reviews. And it was actually a pretty fun movie about like, and, you know, the board game turned into a video game. And they even addressed that in the very beginning of the movie, like how it became a video game. But you know, it's about these kids who find this old video game when they're in detention down the base when they have to clean up stuff. And they end up playing the Jumanji game and they all get sucked into the game and they go on the avatar characters. And it's kind of like them, you know, stuck in the game trying to figure out how they're gonna beat it to get back, you know, to reality but I really thought it was a fun movie I always liked The Rock and you know, Kevin Hart I saw one thing interesting too I believe I saw there's going to be like a Great Outdoors remake starring Kevin Hart I saw something about that I really wonder how that's going to be because then Great Outdoors is one of those John Candy movies I love so much so definitely I'm interested in seeing you know what they do with that the other one that I saw was the um, movie called Call Me By Your Name um, and that one I, it was a really great movie. I definitely would have put that on my best movies list, but I only just saw it, and I didn't saw it after I did that list. That movie, though, was so well done. The director's last movie, though, A Bigger Splash, I didn't care too much for that movie, but this one, though, was just a really great character piece, and it was, you know, set in 1983. They did an amazing job, too, making it really feel like it was in the 80s with the clothes and the music and everything, but highly recommend you guys check that one out. That one, too, I, I have a feeling might end up winning for the Best Picture because it's nominated for a Golden Globe for the actors as well, but I definitely feel like that one's probably going to win. The director, too, he also made the remake which is coming out soon for Suspiria so I'm really interested in seeing you know what he does with that I know it's gonna be kind of more of a reimagining and but you know he really does a good job so I'm interested in seeing though you know how that one is let me know below if you guys saw any of those movies or you know what movies you saw this past weekend into Best Buy we go and in here though I don't see too much new today like I see over here uh, American Made like I mentioned you know came out there uh, 4k is 22.99 so it seems like pretty much everywhere is $22.99 for that one on 4k but I don't see that one I mentioned uh, Brad status anywhere 
In the front, though, they had the House's October built uh, Blu-ray. But other than that, though, that seemed to be all of the major new releases and stuff that I'm seeing in here. So anyway, though, guys, that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video. Like I always say, guys, if you enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Now stay tuned now for some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. And before we get on to the reviews, though, I want to show uh, Comet TV sent over this cool snow globe thing here to promote Stargate Atlantis, which I don't know if I ever saw any episodes of the Stargate series or not. I don't know how long it ran, but Comet TV, you know, if you guys want to be interested in you guys can go to CometTV.com and they play on there, uh, you know, science fiction movies, horror movies, uh, TV series, all kinds of stuff, and you can stream it from the website, or, you know, certain uh, providers actually carry it on TV itself, and you guys can watch it on that, and I believe it's on Roku and all kinds of different stuff, but they sent over these cool things for Tank Girl, which are like, I think these are from the comic book series, but they sent a T, you know, a T-shirt here of, from the Tank Girl movie, and then you have Laura Petty on the front, so that's really cool. Always love these kind of shirts when, you know, have new shirts and stuff to wear for the videos and stuff like that. So that's cool. Definitely, though, check out Comet TV, though, if you're interested in, you know, seeing the stuff they have on there you guys can watch. Now, the first one I got here from um, Universal, this is the Tom Cruise film, American Made. I didn't get to see this one in theaters. It's one I really wanted to see. This is based on a true story about this pilot who ends up like randomly getting a call from the CIA that they need him to run these kind of covert missions for them where he can't tell anybody what he's doing. He can't tell his wife, can't tell anyone his family, because if he does, it's not going to be good for him. That's basically what he's told is, you know, you, you have to keep this totally quiet. But he ends up, you know, getting hired to fly these missions where it's kind of him, um, working for them and he's supposed to like deliver guns to them and um deliver them supplies and stuff for like you know for the cia for like this war that's going on but it ends up being like he ends up you know getting um the people that he's running the guns for bringing them the weapons end up wanting him to fly and you know sell you know fly these drugs over to you know over to america and it's kind of this whole thing of him going on and doing this but then him also working with the cia and he can't tell anyone about all the stuff he's doing but it deals with stuff when he kind of gets found out and then gets in trouble and then he's like you know, that happens really early on in the movie. And then he kind of works more with the CIA again, but they still at it again. So it's kind of like this whole thing of him working for the government and the CIA, but then like running these drugs and then making huge money. Like the amount of money that his, you know, character was making, he just kept on pouring in and in and in, never ending supplies of money. And it got to the point where he was like hiding it in like in everywhere you can think of. He was burying it outside. He had it in suitcases. He had it in shoe boxes everywhere over the house. The whole yard was full of money everywhere, buried all over the place. But it's like, you know, kind of just about him and all these things that he was going on and, and this whole business of him with like the drugs and the smuggling them, yet work with the government. I don't I really like this. I thought it was actually a really good Tom Cruise movie. I always like Tom Cruise. You know, I've, I've even liked some of the movies that kind of recently that got negative reviews with him, like The Mummy and stuff. Like, I don't know. I've always been a fan of Tom Cruise. And I think this, to me, honestly, was one of the movies of his, you know, re the recent films that I've liked best in a long time, to be honest. And I don't know. I thought he, that he really fit for this character and I kind of like what was going on in this whole movie. This is definitely at one, two for 4K. If you guys have a 4K TV, it's a very, very gritty movie. It's shot, I think, I don't know if it was shot on film or not, but it's, it definitely has that real film like look and a gritty aspect, which really benefits in 4K. Um, definitely, though, if you guys have 4K, worth watching in that. It has on here, though, deleted scenes, a bunch of different featurettes, and also a thing on here about the real character that, you know, uh, the real Barry Seal, which, you know, what Tom Cruise's character was playing. Uh, the next one here from uh, the Criterion Collection. This is one I was so excited to watch again. I had not actually watched this movie in years, and I, I always knew it was a great movie. I always knew how much I liked it, but I forgot like how you know. To me, I was like I kind of forgot a little bit how really, really good this was, and how the movie actually holds up so well. And I can't even believe how well it holds up. But, like, everything, though, that John Hughes made, to me, holds up. But this especially holds up. And this is, you know, the Breakfast Club. And this is the new Criterion Edition here. And there have been a couple different um, releases in the past of this. I know there was, like, a Blu-ray years back. And I think there might have been another one as well. It might have been two different Blu-ray releases. But this one here, though, has got a whole bunch of features on here. The biggest thing on here is it has on here 50 minutes of deleted and extended scenes, which had never been seen, you know, been seen before. And I believe they were taken from the, like, the one and only VHS tape that they survived on. Because a lot of stuff from the 80s, deleted scenes, there's very, a lot of them were thrown away or don't, didn't survive. And, like, there's so many movies where these deleted scenes, you know, no one's ever seen them. Like, um, 
um, Bill and Ted, you know, had all this stuff with them at the prom, alternate endings. No one's ever seen them. No one's ever going to find them. So the fact they were actually able to track down this tape and find them and put them on here was an amazing thing. And they have like archival features on here uh, from the set. They have brand new interviews on here with Molly Ringwald um, talking about the film, as well as Ali Sheening both talking about the film, uh, documentary, um, talking about interviews with the cast and crew, um, promotional stuff. They even have stuff from the TV appearances when they were on promoting this movie. But if you guys don't know the movie, it's about uh, five different characters who get uh, Saturday detention. And, you know, you don't know exactly why they have detention. You kind of find out throughout the movie, what, you know, why and why they're there. And it's kind of just a movie about these three, you know, five different kids who all come from different kind of, you know, perspectives at school. The one girl was kind of the outcast and then the two kids were sort of the rich kind of preppy kids. Uh, and the one kid was the nerd and, and then the one was like the guy who was, you know, smoking weed and, and getting in trouble and all kinds of stuff. So he was always in the tension. It was kind of them all coming together and kind of just sort of talking to each other. And it's a, like a very well-made character piece. But like I said, there's not very little in this movie that really dates this film. And it really does hold up so well. Uh, the 4K transfer in here, which is a brand new transfer, really, really well done. I, I believe I heard somewhere that they said they might be releasing Criterion like a... Um, new edition of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It would be kind of cool if they did one for, like... There's a, there's a lot of stuff. Like, it'd be kind of crazy if, like, they even did, like... Um like Home Alone or something. I don't know. I, I like the Criterion. It's kind of doing more comedies and stuff like that. I kind of hope they continue on doing that. But like, you know, some movies that are like more known, but like put like a full like edition in like that with something like that. But hopefully like maybe Uncle Buck would be one, you know, if they could find like deleted scenes and stuff with, you know, John Candy, which would be amazing to see. Especially like if they could find a bunch of stuff for planes, trains, and automobiles. Like hopefully though they continue on with John Hughes stuff. Um, the next ones here are from a company called uh, Midnight factory and these are all italian releases um one of them is region locked i'll tell you well you guys know though when i get to that one but this one is an all region release of a movie called bedeviled and it's um i actually was really interested in seeing this movie and it's i really love this company's releases they give these things and like these really cool uh slip cover things like this and they always have like the characters on the on the uh, case like this but they do a really good job on their releases i really really like the way they look and everything uh they released another one recently called um i think it well, i can't remember I'm forgetting what it was called a uh, scare tactics which is a really really great one that was a region free release as well but if you, I, th I think that was what it was called no scare ca scare campaign but that was another one i really liked that they released but this one is about um this one girl who dies and then um you know, something happens to her and all the, of their friends, you know, are getting sent this thing to download this app. It's like, the, you know, download the Be Devil app and they all d download it. And it's like this weird kind of laughing guy. And he's like saying, oh, what do you need help with? And, he, and he's like saying, oh, if you, what, what do you need me to do? And you guys kind of almost like a Siri type app. And like you can turn off the lights in your house, but then like it becomes very spooky, and there's something really odd about this app. And the app kind of knows stuff about them, and then slowly things start happening to people, and they end up starting to die off and stuff. And you know, there's been other kind of movies sort of like this, but I honestly I, I got a kick out of this movie. I thought it was actually really fun. I liked the the character of this, and there were some really creepy images of the B Devil character and the kind of stuff that they were seeing. But it's basically about the friends though trying to figure out how they're gonna stop this because you know they try and destroy the phone they, there's like no way to get this app to stop and it's i don't know it's just a really fun movie I, I i really got a kick out of this movie like i said too really love the releases from this company uh the next one that they released and this one is called um it's called Simonia, but it's also known as Before I Wake. And this is a movie that notoriously has never released in the U.S. I think it might be coming out finally in a month or two, but it never came out. And it's from the director who did, like, Hush and... Um, I think the second Oculus, uh, no, he did Oculus, a bunch of different movies. He's a really, really good director. This was an outstanding movie with starring Kate Bosworth and Thomas Jane, which hopefully you guys check this one out. But this one, though, is region uh, B lock, so you guys have to have an all-region player to play this one. But this is about um, these um, this couple that ended up adopting this kid, but... Um, and it's Drake, Jacob Trem, Tremboy, Tremlay, you know, who was from the the Room movie, the Room, not the not the the you know the Room, but the movie, the Room that had the Academy Award nominations, and he was in uh, Book of Henry, uh, a bunch of different movies, but. 
they end up adopting him and as soon as he comes back because you know that both of them had lost one of their ch childs you kind of find out through why well, throughout the movie what happened to them to the kid but they start you know when they bring this boy to the house and they find out this kid too has had like a weird past with other adoptions but they start having like weird things happen they start seeing at night uh, these butterflies and these weird things going on in the house and creepy stuff happening and the kid doesn't want to go to sleep and he's always drinking sugar trying to stay awake no matter what he doesn't want to go to sleep and you find out why and stuff and there's a really creepy aspect of this and like a total um, I don't want to say too much about what's happening. All I can say is, though, at night, when the guy kid goes to sleep, things happen. And, like, creepy things happen. But this was just such a well-done movie. And there's been other kind of similar story kind of movies like this, like, you know, haunted kind of things. But this is totally different. And actually, it's a much fresher film, you know, and totally, like, inventive with what it does. Like I said, too, I don't know why this movie... Can, is this supposed to come out in theaters in the U.S.? And I remember, like, two years ago it was going to come. They had posters. They had a trailer. Everything got kept on getting delayed. And I think it was because the company went out of business that were originally produced this that random media or something like i can't remember exactly the company for sure what it was called but i know they like um went out of business and that messed up a whole lot of of their films the next one here is from midnight factory as well and i can't really comment on this one because it's a it has you know a dialogue track in Italian and Finnish and so I think it's a movie from Finland I believe it's a slasher film but it only has on here Italian subtitles so I wasn't able to watch this one I tried to kind of figure out what was happening but it was too hard for me to try and explain it, and I really couldn't pick up on it because it was a dialogue slasher film though but I just want to you know this one is available and this one though is in all region region free release blu-ray as well the next ones here are from um, Umbrella Entertainment and all of these ones these three are all region free so you guys can watch this one on any you know blu-ray player you don't need to have any region free play or anything you know region a region b region c doesn't matter this one is totally region free this is one i remember as a kid this movie really scared me i hadn't probably watched this since i was maybe like eight or nine years old and it's orca the killer whale this company though i really love the stuff they're releasing they're releasing soon um and i'll definitely be reviewing that um uh, Silver Bullet, uh, which I can't wait to see that one in HD, uh, the, the Corey, uh, you know, Haim film. But this movie is Orca the Killer Whale. And this is basically, though, about this... Um it's all set in this kind of small kind of fishing community village. And um, Richard Harris's character, you know has this like really wants to you know catch a killer whale and there's a whole group of these killer whales and he ends up trying to catch them and he ends up maiming the um the male and then accidentally killing the female who was pregnant and um the, the whale ends up dying and it's basically about the the male who was the mate of the female that, that died you know sees Richard Harris's character and has a vendetta against him and it's amazing this movie and it's like it's like the whale is kind of trying to come after him and he's coming to the village where Richard Harris's character is living and like messing things up and knocking over boats destroying things because he wants him to come out on the water and fight him it's this amazing movie and also the music on here is amazing the score is from um you know Marconi you know some of his best music it's just a great theme in this but it's a really dark and gloomy sad sad movie very sad and it's got um Bo Derek is in this movie I think it was one of her first films and Charlotte Rampling is in this movie it's kind of helping um Richard Harris's character along and also um the Native American actor who I always loved who was in the um the second Poltergeist film. He's in this movie as well. And it has on here, though, a commentary track with a film historian, as well as a um, Moby Dick and A. A. La De La Rentes. It's Martin uh, Lartheone Remembers Orca, as well as a theatrical trailer, but a great release, really great picture on this one as well. This one here um, is one called The Land That Time Forgot. And I think I remember seeing this one as a kid. And this is about... um. It's um, it's about like kind of when the war is going on with, and it's like the this um, you know English boat that ends up getting capsized and getting taken in by this German boat, and you know the, the survivors are taken on board of the German boat. And it's kind of they're having a big argument between them and a scuffle because there's a war going on, and like they're one side's taking over and they kind of like take the boat hostage, and then they like have all kinds of problems going on. And the submarine boat that they get onto though goes under under this one point and comes back up in this other dimension sort of, and they kind of get taken to.
this sort of prehistoric world and they're all there with these gigantic dinosaurs and there's like cavemen neanderthals on this island and like they're getting attacked by these crazy dinosaurs and it's really crazy like like old school cheesy effects and stuff. I love the way the dinosaurs look. There's like this, they're all, it's basically just them on the island trying to figure out how they're going to get off, why they're all getting attacked by these islands. And it's around the time too of when they had like the TV show Land of the Lost. So it's kind of got those sort of like uh, dinosaur kind of effects and stuff to it. Uh, another one though, really great transfer on this one. This one I had never seen before, and it stars Robert Downey Jr. and it's a movie called Chaplin. And I had always heard of this, but had never seen this. And it's uh, you know Robert Downey Jr. playing Charlie Chaplin, and this is a, um, it's done at, you know kind of Charlie Chaplin when he's an old man looking back and he's writing his biography with the person he helped write the book with him, and it's kind of him talking about his life and it talks about and shows when he was a you know a kid and how he started and his mother, his mother who dealt with mental illness and his mother is actually was played by Charlie. Chaplin. Chaplin's real life daughter in this was kind of cool and it's just kind of shows how he came over to America how he started in silent films and how he built up his empire and his company and you know his own studios which is I believe the studios went on to be you know the Muppets studios but it's um Pretty much, though, you know, all about his life and, you know, uh, the early films that he started and kind of how the character was created. It was very well done. A lot of people are in this one, like um, Dan Aykroyd's playing a director in this. Mila Jovovich is in this movie. I think this is probably one of her earliest movies, I I'm pretty sure. But really well done, you know, character biopic on uh, Charlie Chaplin. And this one, like I said, is region free as well. Uh, the next one here is from Well Go USA. It's a movie here called um, Bad Day for the Cut. And this is like a revenge film about this guy whose um, mother has ended up, you know, he's an older man living with his mother. And his mother, he sees like when he's out in the shed doing some work, he sees these men leaving the house. And they, had, you know, had attacked and killed his mother. And it's him going and he, he, he kind of is trying to figure out exactly who these people are. And it's sort of him going around on a vendetta to try and track down and, you know, kill the people that were involved in, you know, killing his mother. And he ends up finding this guy you know, one of the people who comes back after, you know, his mother was killed to try and kill him. And, you know, it's these two men and he, the one kid was this younger guy and he ends up basically kidnapping this younger kid and like forcing him to say, who are you working for? You know, who is this group? Who are these people? You come to find out that this guy's sister was, you know, you know, basically kidnapped and forced to work for them and it's kind of both of them together trying to bring down this whole operation and get to the bottom of who's in charge of the whole thing but a really well done kind of you know brutal uh revenge film you know from the UK, but it was definitely pretty well done. Always like these revenge films. I also love the cover on this one. But definitely, if you guys like, you know, revenge type films, check this one out here. Uh, the next one here, and I'll put a link where you guys can get this one for the best price and, and where the best place to order this one from. But this is um, a movie called F the Prom. This is a, and it was actually directed by um, Benny Fine, you know, who's one of the Fine brothers, and both the Fine brothers wrote this. Uh, the script for this one and produced this one through their company. So there's a couple different YouTubers in here having cameos and stuff. And the one girl who is in the Boo Medea films, I saw, recognize her in this. A bunch of different people I knew from YouTube and stuff in this. But it's essentially, though, about a group of... Um, it's about this guy, you know, whose father is always talking about the prom and how that's his biggest thing is when he, you know, his prom and stuff. And he's like kind of the unpopular kid there. And the one girl that he went to high school with that he was friends with in the, in the ninth grade, she became really popular. So this is like starts in the ninth grade for like the first five minutes. Then it cuts to the 12th grade when they're, you know, he's not really popular. And the girl who was his good friend, she's now the popular, like the most popular girl at the school. But she had a big thing happen with her boyfriend and they broke up and all this stuff. And both of them kind of become friends again. And they, you know, are kind of unhappy about everything. And they kind of come up with a plan of wanting to destroy the prom because they know how much people are excited about it. And kind of, so it's kind of them trying to get together a group of the other unpopular kids and the people that she actually picked on. But now she kind of feels sorry for what she did to them. So they're all kind of coming together to try and, you know, put together this whole group to try and destroy the prom. And, and I don't know, it, it, one thing that was kind of fun too was I thought this was going to be like a real PG kind of movie. It's actually, you know, way more like an R-rated type film than I thought. Because when I saw the Fine Brothers, I thought, oh, this would probably be just real PG, safe. But no, no, it's way more, it doesn't have any rate. It's not rated, 
but I, it would definitely be rated R. I'm pretty certain because of the you know amount of times they say F the prime in this movie. But it was I actually kind of a fun and it was funny too because I watched this movie right before I watched The Breakfast Club and they and they even have um these three like, these actually five characters like that are in the background a couple scenes dressed like the Breakfast Club characters to kind of be like a you know homage to that. But if you guys like you know. Movies kind of like The Duff, I guess. I would consider this one sort of like that a little bit. I would say to check this one out. And the last one here... Oh, there's actually two more. The last two here. This this one here is from Twilight Time. This is a limited edition release here of the movie called The Hospital. This is limited to uh, 3,000 copies. And this is an interesting one. It stars George C. Scott. And I, I don't know if I had seen this one in the past or not but it sort of seemed a little bit familiar but it's George G. Scott is this guy who's very depressed he works for the hospital he's one of the higher ups there and in the hospital though like you know there's all kinds of confusion and weird stuff going on and the one night the one doctor was found in the bed and he was dead and like the nurses are all like I don't understand was the doctor sick what is he doing in the bed why was he in there and it's kind of like this whole hospital is having weird stuff going on when people that are like you know sh treatable for some reason are dying there's all kinds of strange stuff there's like strange kind of people lurking around in there but this whole hospital is kind of falling apart and George C. Scott is trying to keep it together and you know and he's already depressed himself and not happy about his life and what's going on with his family and everything. It's just all these weird, and it's definitely a dark comedy kind of take on the whole thing. It's from 1971. It has on here, though, isolated music and effects tracks, as well as a theatrical trail on this one. But if you guys want to see like a quirky kind of weird comedy movie, you know, dark comedy, check this one out here. And the last one here, and this one is from, I believe this is from, I think it's from Random media i believe but this one i only had yeah random media i only have the disc for this one but it's a movie called uh blue world order and um this one comes out on demand and stuff on January 16th, and then there's going to be a DVD release as well but like i said this is a movie called blue world order i just have a disc to hold but it um has Billy Zane. It's a futuristic kind of movie, though, about a virus that kind of happened, and all the kids, like this pulsating virus, and all the kids had died except for this one kid. And it's like the, the father is trying to keep this kid safe and kind of protect them from people who are trying to come after them because they know that this is the only kid that's you know, alive still. And it's got some crazy stuff in it, like these scene with these DeLoreans, like in a chase, like all these DeLorean cars. And it's all, it's got sort of a vibe of like a Mad Max kind of feel, because it's like Mad Max Road Warrior kind of feel because it's like a real futuristic and it's a very indie movie but they did a really good job though because it's very ambitious for these like extreme kind of like uh, effects kind of things and heavy duty action kind of stuff going on in this movie so kind of an interesting one and Billy Zane is in the movie as well but anyway though guys that's all for the review portion of this video but now before we go though a quick unboxing of the latest BAM boxes and before I go, I have two BAM boxes to check out. I'll put a link below if you guys are interested in, you know, finding out about the BAM box. But I didn't get to show the one last month, so I have two different ones to show. There's always really cool, like, you know, memorabilia and autographs and all kinds of pop culture stuff in these. Let's see. The first thing in here is a Stranger Things uh, Chief Hopper uh, badge replica. So, and I actually have watched one episode of Stranger Things. I have to watch more of them, though. But I have finally, you know, watched one of them. And I will, you know, watch through more of that show. But that's a pretty cool thing in here, a badge replica. This thing here is some kind of a a coin thing in here. I don't know what this is. I'll have to read the paper to see what that is. Same with this. I don't know if that... I guess that could be for the badge to sit on? I don't know. And this is like a Transformers, um, you know, iron-on uh, patch thing. And this... I'm not sure who this is uh, on here on the... And maybe Magnum P.I.? I, no, I don't know. I don't know who that is. I'll have to look in the thing. There's a print here of Venom. I believe that's... Or, 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 I think that's actually the Carnage character. And then there's an autograph here of... Um, who's this an autograph of? Um, Diane Persing, the voice of Poison Ivy in the um, Batman the Animated Series. So that's pretty cool. Like I said, they always have in here autographs. Is there a paper in here? No, there's no little... I don't see a paper thing in here that says, you know, who these things are. So that's kind of weird. Yes, yeah, so I don't know, 100% certain, though, what that thing was, that, that pin or that little coin thing is. So I guess we'll never know. If anyone knows, though, let me know. We'll take a look, though, at the other one here. And see, usually, though, you know, they have a little paper thing in there. And here, though, this is a mini leg lamp kit 
for um, you know Christmas story so that's kind of cool you can like put together the you know the uh, leg lamp that's kind of a cool thing and then this is you know I know what this is this is the the glass from you know um, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation that they drink the eggnog out of that's the, that's a pretty cool pin and then here is like a a million dollar of you know Jack Skellington you know from Nightmare Before Christmas and Sally that's pretty cool and then this thing here which is some kind of a I don't know what that is like a one-up thing and then in here is a picture of Deadpool done like Bob Ross and then an autograph of um, and I actually got an autograph from him so that's kind of cool this was included in here because it was very expensive when I got it. it was like I think it was like forty dollars it was you know of Deep Roy you know who is from um, well, this is from Star Trek, but, the, you know, he was, you know, the Oompa Loompa, the main, you know, the only Oompa Loompa in the Charlie Chocolate Factory remake, and, you know, Tim Burton's one. But, the, no, there's no paper in this one either, so it's like, yeah, I guess they don't put those things in them anymore, the little paper. And there's, a, like, a necklace here, like an Olmac kind of necklace. I don't know. That's weird, though, that they don't put that thing in here, you know, like, because, like, all the other months they've had the papers, but I guess maybe they don't do that anymore. But anyway, though, guys, that was just a look at, you know, the uh, BAM box, you know, unboxing. So thanks again for watching.